So several years ago, a patient was referred to my office um, because she kept having infections in her jaw. She had seen uh, several uh, general dentists who had just prescribed her uh, antibiotics and it wasn't going away. Uh, she saw a naturopath who prescribed her some ozone rinses, um, and, but the infection still lingered and she was starting to see some bones starting to poke through her jaw. She was a cancer patient um, who was on a uh, Exgeva, which is an injectable um, drug for preserving bone. It's used twice a year. Um, during the examination, we talked and I did my regular periodontal examination and I noticed again that she had kind of confirmed everything, that she was having abscess mostly on her uh, inside of her jaw and um, there was some bones starting to poke through on the right side. So I did a consult with her oncologist and kind of described, uh, asked, asked for some information and she had uh, just recently finished one injection so I know I couldn't do anything for her at least until six months after her last injection of Vixgeva, just to kind of clear it out of her system. Um, during my initial examination I also determined she had some periodontal disease that we need to take care of. Um, and I determined that uh, doing LANAP on her would probably be the best way to treat this, her periodontal disease, because it's very, it's not very invasive, very, not very traumatic, and uh, I could get uh, not only uh, the antibacterial effect of the uh, NDAG, but I could also get a biostimula biostimulatory effect uh, during the LANAP protocol too. After we cleared, the, uh, cleared everything with her oncologist, we went ahead and treated her uh, with LANAP and proceeded very well. She had very little discomfort, uh, which I usually expect out of LANAP, and we proceeded to see her for her post-ops. During her post-op appointments, um, I noted that the infection had gone down. She wasn't getting any suppuration out of her, uh, those areas again. But I also noticed that uh, some of the uh, bone, which I would have assumed is necrotic now, was breaking through the tissue. And this also is due to the fact that the tissue was very thin in the area, and the infection was going away and the tissue is kind of resorbing back and the, the bone is hopefully trying to come off. We uh, discussed with the patient, she wasn't having any pain or anything, and so we opted to do some biostimulation in the area. Um, for the first while, uh, first few appointments, we saw her weekly, um, but there really wasn't any effect of the biostimulation and I wasn't even removing the bone because I want to see what would happen just with straight biostimulation. After um, I wasn't seeing any results, I actually uh, met up with a colleague of mine, Dr. Neil Lehrman, who has uh, quite a bit of experience in treating um, osteonecrosis cases, drug-induced. And I discussed the case with him, showed him some pictures, and he told me I have to up my biostimulation, uh, the amount of bios uh, energy I was putting in to the site. I saw the patient the uh, following week. Uh, I started to uh, also remove some of the bone very conservatively with a uh, regular high-speed handpiece, and interesting enough, no anesthetic. So we went ahead and removed uh, the bone that I felt I felt comfortable doing. Then we went ahead and uh, used the periolase in our uh, internal uh, intraoral biostimulation mode. And that was it. And she went away. Uh, she came back uh, a couple weeks later. We went ahead and did the exact same thing. Um, over time, uh, we end up with uh, about nine treatments of uh, of biostimulation and uh, concerted bone removal. During that time, I also noted that uh, as we were moving the bone, we start seeing fresh tissue that was growing in behind the previously necrotic bone. And she still, again, wasn't having any pain, and we were still doing our regular maintenances on her um, after LANAP, is, which is what we do. At our nine month mark after uh, initial therapy, um, I determined that we needed to remove uh, a big piece of bone that was trapped under the tissue. And so uh, we went ahead, we did a, a very conservative uh, a flap, traditional flap surgery, and the bone just kind of came off. And there was tissue in behind there too. We went ahead, we uh, sutured her up, uh, regular post-ops, and uh, everything healed in beautifully. She ended up with a lot of recession, however, but there was no, uh, the pocket depths were down to maintainable levels. Um, she wasn't having any pain, no discomfort, no sensitivity, and um, the teeth weren't mobile. We've been following her for a, year, a few years now for regular maintenances, and she's doing fine. If this had gone to a more traditional treatment for 
osteonecrosis. I firmly believe she would have been put into hyperbaric uh, chamber treatment. Um, and I firmly believe that uh, someone else would have recommended uh, to remove half her jaw uh, to get rid of the necrotic bone. Um, I believe that it, what saved her and her jaw and basically I th I'm going to say her life of uh, not have you know of having her uh, dentition intact was the fact that I could use the periolase for biostimulation of the area and um, her treatment in a very conservative manner. It took I think this is uh, treatment of osteonecrosis. We're going to see more of this uh, in the future because of patients who are on bisphosphonates or um, other types of uh, bone preserving medications, especially the injectables. Uh, and I think we have to find ways to be able to treat this in a very conservative and life saving manner. And I believe the Perilase offers that option.